And I'm like, this is just disrespectful, right? I send my people, we do our job, your house is clean. And now it's taking you this long to pay a measly $300 for a service you called to get done, right? <laughs> If you're thinking about starting a pressure washing business, but you want to learn more about the equipment, mixing chemicals, how to clean every surface on a residential job site, property protection, and much, much more, check out the how to wash course. It'll be the first link in the comment section and the description. Okay. So if you've been in business for any amount of time and you're going to continue to be in business, at some point you are going to run into a scenario where you are dealing with a customer that is being a little bit stubborn when it comes to paying their bill, right? You went, you gave them the quote, you performed the service, you sent them the invoice and a couple days go by and maybe a week goes by. You don't hear anything. They're not answering their phone. They're not responding to emails. They're not responding to text. Maybe you've got quote IQ and you can see that they are viewing the invoice. They have seen the invoice. They have received the invoice, right? This can become problematic, especially if you're new to business and you need that money because you know that's how you just need it, right? Um, Anyway, so I ran into a situation. Now, this has happened a few times over the course of the last you know, two decades that we've been running this pressure washing business where people, maybe they're like, eh, my mortgage is a little bit more important. My car payment is a little bit more important. My kid's tuition, paying the, you know, the, the, the electric bill, whatever the case is, those take priority. And the old pressure washing bill, they get stuck to the bottom of the pile. And it doesn't really bother them, but it impacts us as business owners. And when you're first starting out and you don't have that cash flow coming, then it can it can be a real problem. And so I'm going to share with you guys today a chain of events that happened and how I dealt with it. And I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to tell me what you think I did. So after I tell you kind of the initial story, I'm going to say to you guys, tell me what you think I would do. I want you to pause the video. I want you to go to the comment section and I want you to tell what you think I would do or you think I did in this particular scenario. And then at the end of the video, you go back down there and you say, yep, I was right or nope, I was wrong and whatever. So kind of fun, something different. So play along. Customer calls the answering service. I get the message, shows me the name, shows me, uh, the, now if I remember correctly, this particular customer, they just left a phone number and a name. They didn't leave the property address. So I go ahead and I'm just going to read you guys this text exchange of this customer. Got to find it. Okay, here it is. And I have to be honest, I'm a little bit embarrassed about the dates, okay? Because as I'm recording this, it's June 4th, okay? The customer called on February 7th. This is how long this has been going on, but just bear with me. I'm going to go through the, the messages, the exchange, kind of what happened. And then I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to tell me how you think I should deal with this. Like I said, we get the message. Uh, he didn't leave his address. Hey, it's Mike with All American. I'm going to need the property address in order to give you an estimate. He sends over the property address. So I looked it up and it was a like 1,200, 1,300 square foot house, very small. So I said, it's going to be $350 for the house. And uh, did you want to get on the schedule? Okay. Sent that within, actually, I was, I was on point within a minute of getting that, okay, from my service. Uh, on February 20th, they call back to the service, again, asking for a price, okay? It's February, it's cold, you know, things kind of slow down, even down here in the South. So we want every opportunity we can get. We want to be in front of every potential customer. So while this guy, he already asked, he already got his price, maybe he forgot, he was pushing it off, whatever the case is, February 20th. I respond back. We can do your house for $300. Uh, please let me know when you would like to get on the schedule. And then I sent him the little link to scheduling the uh, appointment online. And then he went ahead, he scheduled it online. On February 23rd, he gets the text message from us that says your appointment is tomorrow. Let us know if there's anything that you need from us. Here's a few things that you can do in order to prepare for the appointment, okay? And there's a link and it goes blah, blah, blah. So I get the thumbs up emoji from him on the uh, old textometer. So then on March 29th, and this is where I start to get a little bit embarrassed of uh, the timeline, because like I said, when you're first starting out, you need to be paid almost immediately for every single job because that's, that's your livelihood, right? At this point, you know, we've been doing this a long time. We've got a ton of business constantly, you know, payments are rolling in all the time. And it's, you know, it is obviously a major part of my overall, you know, income, but it's, it's not... 
We put together the most intensive training the industry has ever seen. Over six hours of in-depth training on the best methods for cleaning houses, roofs, driveways, and every other surface you might encounter on a residential job site. How to wash covers, the chemicals to use, how to mix them, the equipment, the best methods to make you the most efficient and profitable you can be. Safety and property protection, specialty chemicals, as well as pro tips, and so much more. We've helped 4,500 students get their ECP certification, which means how to wash delivers and continues to deliver because it's yours to keep and review forever. We've also included an extensive extensive Q&A section in each module, which gives you even more information at your fingertips. How to wash is less than the price of one house wash, so don't wait. Click the link below. As significant as it is for people that are doing that as just their sole means of support and income, okay? So my phone just clicked off. March 29th. Hey there, this is Mike with All American Pressure Cleaning. Uh, here's your invoice again, and I sent him a link to the invoice, okay? Now understand that on February uh, 24th, he received his invoice and I've got an automation set up just as a reminder if they don't pay within a certain amount of time, sends another link. Okay, that was March 29th. On April 20th, still nothing. Uh, I send another message. Patrick, sorry, buddy. Uh, your invoice needs to be paid today. 49 days since service. And then here's a link to your invoice. Uh, again, I have full visibility of when people view the invoice. So I know that he opened it up at that point. So like I said, that was April 20th, okay? Today is June 4th. I took my eye off the ball, whatever the, the, the pun is, and I didn't follow up, okay? It was only 300 bucks, not honestly that big of a deal. Uh, I, I don't need it to pay my mortgage. So I, I just let it slide. Also though, but he's also getting repeat emails because I've got that set up. Anyway, on uh, what was the date? On Friday, so this past Friday at 9.36 a.m., I was going through uh, the books and I saw the aging report and I noticed how old this was. Like I said, fuck when, sorry, way, way months and months ago. So it pissed me off. And, and, and I'm like, this is just disrespectful, right? I send my people, we do our job, your house is clean. And now it's taking you this long to pay a measly $300 for a service you called to get done, right? I didn't call you, you called me. I just, you know, we performed our, you know, our service. Anyway, I sent, a, I left him a voicemail on Friday, just saying, Patrick, it's been way too long. Your house is going to have a contractor's lien filed on it. I'm going down to the courthouse at noon. Now I'm not really going to the courthouse for $300. My time is way more valuable than that. But normally the threat, just the threat of a lien is probably one of the biggest tools that you can use in a scenario like this when you know, somebody is skirting paying their invoice. So just the threat of a contractor's lien is typically enough to generate some, some interest. So like I said, I left him the voicemail. I sent him an email with the same message and I sent him a text just saying, filing a contractor's lien at noon today. Here's your invoice, pay it. Well, I, I use the F-bomb, but I said, pay your F in invoice today uh, to avoid this. Okay, that was at 9.36 a.m. when I sent all three of those. Okay. And like I said, the threat of the contractor's lien is typically enough at 1026. So an hour after he got this, he sent a message. Okay. We don't know what this message is. It was a long one, but at this point I'm pretty heated. Okay. And I've got little patience for people that I think are trying to screw me over to get, get one over on me. Right. Because they're not just screwing me over. They're screwing over my family, right? My wife, I've got bills to pay. And while this is a, a, you know, a, a pretty small amount, it all adds up. If everybody thought, oh, I'll just pay when I want to pay, that can be devastating to a small business, right? So we have to stay on task and we have to, you have to do better than I did in this scenario. You have to, you have to stay in front of it because this, I, I take some responsibility for this, but he's been getting the invoices. This was the message. Pause the video right here and tell me what you think I'm going to do, right? This is, like I said, this is something new, so just play along, okay? Hi, I was in the hospital in a coma for two weeks, and then I stayed in the hospital for another two weeks. Can we work out some payment plan? I don't even have a memory of the house being clean, but it has been cleaned, and I am willing to pay for your work. Would $50 every two week work, okay? If you didn't already, tell me what you think I'm going to do, okay? So, 
my response, and I don't know if you guys have been watching the channel for too long, but um, I've shared it a couple times and there are some videos of what happened to me, uh, but I'm about to share with this gentleman. Uh, but I asked him, what happened to you? So his response was, I had lithium toxicity. Uh, they had never seen a 4.2 number. 1.8 is fatal. I don't have that much, but you can do an auto pull on my debit card for every two weeks on Friday. Uh, you did your work and I pay my bills. Okay. I respect this. I respect the fact that he's taking ownership of, of, of the work being done and that he is willing to pay his bill. I also know that it, he was only in the coma for four weeks. I don't know when that happened. It could have happened immediately after and, and just, you know, what happens after all of that, because it's not fun. So he says that, that text, uh, and he said, you know, auto draft and all that. And then he sends another text that says, my hospital bill before insurance was over $100,000, but my deductible is 16K. And even trying to pay that plus some stuff isn't covered. So like, I understand that. And like I said, um, I'm going to share with you guys what I shared with him. And this is what I said. May 29th, 2019. I was put into an induced coma for four weeks as a result of bilateral walking pneumonia. All of my organs shut down completely. I feel you. Don't worry about the bill. Go leave us a five-star Google review as payment. Best of luck, and I hope you feel better. And of course, I also leave him a little link to our Google review page so he can go and drop us a five-star in appreciation you know, of, uh, of being alive, I guess. Uh, and his response, of course, was, oh my God, thank you. Some little uh, praying hands. I'm so appreciative. Uh, I hope that you don't have too many lingering side effects. I can't believe you are so kind, and I'm so thankful. And so probably if I hadn't have been in that same scenario, because I know um, w w the costs, I was in a coma for almost a month, uh, recovery, all of those other things. I, every organ shut down, like I told you, um, not only, not only was it all that was bad, but uh, I was intubated for the entire time. And in that process, my uh, vocal cords attached to the intubation tube, which when I woke up, it's called ICU psychosis because you're in a really, you're, it's really strong drugs that can keep somebody in a coma for that long. And for, for me, it was a long time. And um, when I woke up, I was going kind of crazy and I ripped out the intubation tube, which messed up, paralyzed my uh, vocal cords, which is a little bit why I've got a raspy voice now. They came back, but um, so that happened. Uh, I also was on dialysis because my kidneys didn't kick back on like everything else did right away. Uh, fortunately, I, full recovery. But, um, during that whole stage, I, uh, was, uh, had to be subdued and was like basically, um, tied down to my bed because I was trying to, you know, I was a bad boy, but I, I reached down with my mouth and ripped out the port, uh, and the tube and blood and everything. It's, it was a whole thing. So you don't remember you're, you you are foggy. There are things that you don't remember things that, uh, are, it's just, it was, it's a crazy thing. Like I couldn't even find words. That's the best way I could explain it. I couldn't find words where I'd be talking and then just couldn't figure out the next word. I knew what I was trying to say, but my mouth wasn't keeping up with the brain. So I, I really feel for this guy and that's why I did what I did, but we don't always know everybody's situation, right? There, there are things that go on in our own lives that we don't share. There are things in other people's lives that we don't know about that impact these things. And while we are running a business and it is not a charity, uh, it is a for-profit business. I said it once, I'm going to say it a million times. I didn't start this business just to, to give away money or, or not allow people to pay me. But when you run a successful business, it allows you to be more altruistic. It allows you to be more charitable. It allows you to give back. And in scenarios like this, it allows you to take care of people that obviously are in a hard spot. And uh, I encourage you guys, you know, should you ever run into th something like that, 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 you know, you, you kind of look at yourself and think to yourself, you know, if, if I was in that scenario, how would I want someone to treat me? I'm going to do everything I can to help those that that genuinely deserve it. Uh, and I hope that you guys too. Anyway, kind of a weird video, I guess. You guys saw the little commercial I threw in there at the beginning about how to wash. If you're interested in that, definitely check that out. It is a great source uh, to teach you everything that you need to know. Uh, and it's also a great source for training new employees if you're looking to scale your business. And obviously I would be remiss if I did not say, go download Quote IQ. It's on the Apple, it's in the Google Play Store. Appreciate you guys watching and I hope you have a great day. And I got to cut this in right now because I totally forgot when I was recording this, but were you right? Were you wrong? Did you know what I was going to do? Or did you not know what I was going to do? Just leave a comment down below. And again, talk to you later. Bye.